Hello and welcome to Conversite E4M webinar on consumer eating habits post COVID-19. We have a esteemed we have a list of esteemed panelists here with us. Um, I would want to thank our presenting partners, Conversite, for this amazing session that we are about to have. Without taking uh, eating into much of the time of the speakers, I would quickly um, introduce our speakers. Uh, first of all, about our um, presenting partner, Conversite. Conversite is the largest and the most loved platform by community builders and leaders grow and manage their communities on Facebook. More than 4,000 admins trust Conversite to grow and manage over 90 million members in their communities, which is Facebook groups. It also helps brands engage with existing communities uh, for uh, supercharged social listening and purpose-led marketing campaigns and build communities from scratch. We have Tamanna Dhamija with us, who is going to be our panel chair. Uh, Tamanna, who is the CEO and co-founder of Conversite. Before building Conversite, she has also built India's largest parenting community with over 2 million moms and has been acknowledged and certified by Facebook on community building. Next, we have Pawan Singh, who is the deputy manager marketing Amul. As marketing head of Amul India, his portfolio includes Amul's flagship dairy categories, along with a wide range of emerging and upcoming product categories. We have Mr. Vincent Narhona, Vice President Marketing, Have More Ice Cream, with over 10 years of experience in brand marketing, product innovations, digital and traditional media promotions and brand campaigns. In the past, he has also worked with brands like HT, NDTV and HUL for leading uh, their product innovation and business and brand building, various brands under these. Then we have Mr. Adit Kohli, Community Head, Delhi Foodies, as a working professional who is now full-time community entrepreneur. He had started Food Community six years ago and has now scaled it into multiple communities across different domains, food being the largest. Over to you, Tamanna. Thank you, Tasme. Uh, hi, everyone. Very uh, nice to be talking to all of you on this exciting topic on you know, how the food industry has changed post-COVID. Uh, as Tasme said, I'm the co-founder of Conversite. Uh, uh, before Conversite, we started our journey by building Baby Destination. Um, so in, in Baby Destination, we started creating Facebook groups for mothers. Uh, so that's the community that we have. We have about 30 Facebook groups with 2 million mums. A lot of them are around food, food for infants, food for toddlers, and you know, food, uh, food for weight loss and food, uh, healthy food for families. Also food for weight gain. And that's how the communities are. Uh, and then Conversite is a platform now where, uh, you know, community admins, specifically Facebook group admins, use our tools to manage their day-to-day uh, -day, uh, community management tasks, but also monetize with uh, relevant brand partnerships. A lot of what we do at Conversite is uh, linked to insights, and it's all conversational insights. And which is where, uh, you know, some of the questions that, uh, uh, and the items that we'll discuss really comes from, from the insights that we see in conversations. Uh, what I'll do just to kick this off is I'll, uh, you know, share my screen and just uh, talk about a couple of trends that, you know, we have seen, uh, especially post COVID. So one is just, you know, needless to say, right after the pandemic, right, when we were all started dining in versus dining out, like as Adit says it, this is what happened to the category conversations, right? There was a massive spike. This went up to being 4X and then, you know, that has, that has remained. Uh, people who never stepped into the kitchen, stepped into the kitchen and stepped into, into the kitchen with no help. Uh, so this is one. What's interesting is uh, pre and post COVID, I'm just highlighting some of the charts here. There was so much data, but you know, there's some interesting charts that I wanted to show. Uh, uh, if we just look at Indian desserts versus non-Indian desserts and especially cakes, this is pretty much how the share of voice look pre-COVID and uh, which is, you know, we were primarily a lot of conversations were about making Indian desserts at home. And post-COVID, as you can say, it see it has been sort of, you know, flipped and this is even higher now towards cake. So all kinds of cakes, right? Ovenless cakes and Oreo cakes and Oreo just as a keyword has become like a part of every recipe. So it's been super interesting there. Uh, 
immunity needless to say every single sub category that we look at so overall immunity conversations have gone up five times and pretty much all of the conversations right after covid had immunity in it right so what are immunity boosting food right suddenly food just became centered around immunity so what's interesting to see is even so many months after every single sub category so this for example is a breakfast category for adults and the reason i've picked i'm showing breakfast here because breakfast category in itself had a steady increase right so this is it's interesting how the breakfast category right april may june continued to go up and has stayed stayed there but within the breakfast category immunity if you see like 24% conversations were still linked to immunity right and this wasn't present before covid right like when we were talking about breakfast we weren't talking about immunity this is another interesting uh, this, this this is sort of factors within the beverage category so just beverages right tea and coffee and uh where again immunity so it's more like green tea for immunity or homemade uh you know immunity boosting teas so these are just some of the trends which uh you know are sort of uh something that we'd not seen in tens of years is now happening uh so i want to kick off the conversation by uh, uh pavan asking you a question that you know amul has uh, it's been all of our loved brands right we all grew up on amul and amul butter and i'm here in new york uh, you know and and my parents like they still love amul butter so i have to go to an indian grocery store and get amul butter for them but uh, uh, my question is with with this wide sort of range of products and i'm not coming to the new products yet but the existing sort of dairy products uh, what were the products where you saw a spike and you saw a, sort of a decline in demand post post covid and 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 what was the sort of how did we react to that uh... so tamana uh, like you so rightly uh, pointed out in your graphs this is precisely what happened the moment lockdown began sometime in late march and i think 24th of march is when the lockdown actually happened and even before that there was heightened sense you know sensitivity regarding the risk of coronavirus infection so people were getting quite justifiably very apprehensive about getting exposed to the external environment and stepping out of home so two things happen uh, like your graph said out of home consumption dropped dramatically sharply and almost like instantly and in home consumption went up now in home consumption again this uh, there are two parts to it so ordering food in from food uh, delivery platforms now that wasn't an option in india in the early months of lockdown because a lot of services were not uh, operational and uh, then there were restrictions in movement so self cooking home cooking was the only option and a lot of people who up till that point in time had no inclination towards cooking had no time for cooking well they had to fill in or did not have the skills or the knowledge they had to fill up that skill gap very quickly now between uh, if you actually look at uh, i think you were also looking at some of the online data here but if you look at google trends you will see between march and april there was a huge surge in the in uh, keywords like say cheese cheese recipes and we were looking at the data we were all the marketing team were looking at the data real time and we saw this huge spike in people seeking information on home cooking how to prepare how to do simple basic you know cooking how to prepare specific dishes and uh, most of our ingredient products for example cheese butter ghee paneer condensed milk dahi we have such a huge basket of products so the demand for everything went up because people were staying at home they were cooking more and even if you look at the instagram pics from that uh, you know those months people were very eager to show off their newly acquired culinary skills so they were making you know those masterpieces at home and they were taking pics and showing off on instagram and so on so yes we saw a big big increase sudden increase a sudden sp uh, spike so to say in the demand for all consumer product categories in fact all the in home you know products which could be consumed inside the home the demand for those went up not only for the products which are typically classified as ingredients to be used in the kitchen say butter cheese paneer ghee etc but also for a ready to eat and ready to cook categories we do frozen snacks we do mithai we do chocolates so all that anything that could be consumed at home 
went up dramatically. More, more than that, there was also the big hunger for information because people were getting into cooking and they wanted to brush up on their cooking skills and they wanted to fill up those skill gaps very rapidly. So they wanted to know more about how to prepare specific recipes, how to prepare that awesome dish that they would order from a restaurant and no, no longer they can, have, you know, they have to make it at home and they wanted to know how. So what we did was we created what we call the world largest cook, live cooking show. And we use FB Live as a platform for hosting it. This initiative started around, uh, I believe, April 17, 2020. It continues till today, and it is going very strong. Today is the 201th day. Continuously, we do more than seven sessions every day, specific time bands. We brought in more than 3,000 chefs from across the world. We gave them a platform to showcase their skills, their recipes, and share their cooking skills with people who wanted to acquire that information. And uh, we've done, what, almost 1,570 sessions in 201 days. On that show itself, we've got uh, accumulated views of nearly a billion across 1570 sessions. Individual sessions, some of, some of them, I mean, the views range from anything from two lakhs to, we did, I guess, a maximum of 4.5 million for one session. And these are chefs from across the entire you know, spectrum. So, I mean, the chefs were also had a lot of spare time because restaurants were closed uh, from, say, March to May, June, and then uh, they were now gradually opening up. So they also had a lot of spare time and they were able to come onto this platform and showcase their skills and share the knowledge with people. So we had celebrity chefs, we had professional chefs from every institution, we had uh, home chefs, we had home cooking enthusiasts, people who used to you know, have those family recipes that they would treasure for generations and then wanted to share with the world. So we gave all of them a platform. And this is going on very strongly. Now we are doing thematic routes to it. We are doing languages. We have separate sessions in Tamil. We have separate sessions in Arabic for the Middle East audience. And we have we are doing now sessions in Bangla very soon. So it's going on strong. We is, I believe it's already gone into one of the record books. Uh, one of the sessions had thousand chefs across multiple locations, and all of them were collaborating and cooking together simultaneously on a single project. So that particular event already went to the record books. I'm very hopeful it's not happened yet, but I think we are likely, and I hope it happens, get into the Guinness Book as a world record for the longest running recipe uh, or live cooking show in the entire world on digital online. But that's not the only thing we did. We also created our own content. We, uh, I think we made around 550 recipe videos because people were hungry for you know, information on cooking. So 550 recipe videos, in 11 Indian languages, we wanted to expand our reach footprint across the entire country. We hosted them on our YouTube channel. Today, that channel has around, uh, I think, uh, three and a half lakh subscribers, out of which 25 to 30 percent were added during these last seven months. So a lot of things we have done, and not only in terms of being able to connect and communicate with people, the most important thing that we had to do during this COVID times was also to be able to physically connect to our loyal customer base make sure when they were spending time at home, when they had no option uh, of leaving home and going out shopping, we were still able to bring a mood products to their doorstep. So that was very important for us. Wow, this is amazing. Uh, you know, I was, I was seeing a lot of recipe, um, uh, you know, a lot of recipes, right? I was looking up on the uh, website and, but somehow I've, I've, you know, I've not seen it in a lot of Facebook groups, so I didn't know, but this is amazing. It's, it's mind blowing. Uh, and, you know, I think it also helped, like, I think cooking is, is therapeutic. It, it is. is therapeutic for a lot of people, right? And for the people who never knew what it even meant like or felt like once they indulged or had to do it, uh, you know, it just, it's, it's a very good, it, it's the time when, it, you know, you bond with the family, it feels good. So I think it also the fact that like a billion views is, is, is mind blowing, right? A billion views have only been heard, heard of on like TikTok, but this just shows, right? Because people had so much time at hand and utilizing that time, uh, you know, cooking and seeing recipes. And if, you know, Amul stepped up as a brand to provide that, uh, you know, that's amazing. I'll definitely check it out. You said this is on your Facebook page. Yes, it is. Okay. And all of these were professional chefs. 
So, like I said, there were the entire spectrum of shares. So we had celebrity shares. We even had the uh, um, chef Thomas Hubler. If you've heard of him, he's the royal chef, the king of Saudi. So from that end of the spectrum to a lot of professional chefs who had time to spare, fortunately during this entire COVID period, and then uh, there were a lot of home chefs too. So people uh, and people who wanted to share that specific, uh, you know, that family recipe that had been treasured in their family for generations and they wanted to share it with the world. So we, I remember one of the most popular sessions was by a lady from Rajasthan who shared her recipe for dal bati and the kind of views she got and the responses that we were getting when she was live. I mean, that was kind of phenomenal, very encouraging. And uh, the people who come on again and again, we have as many as sessions, seven sessions a day. And uh, these are on very specific time bands and they happen from across the entire world. Largely India, but then we have also chefs who join us from different countries as well. Oh, very exciting. I'm sure, Adit, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have things uh, uh, later. So I'll come back. I'll come back, Pawan, with, uh, you know, a couple of more questions. Uh, but uh, Vincent, uh, ice cream is something we all love. <laughs> we continue to love. And uh, so for me, lockdown was the time when I first time ever created uh, ice cream at home. Right, just uh, and again, it's, it was more craving than anything else. And for for my son, so I created an almond milk ice cream without an ice cream maker. So it's interesting. We were looking at some polls, right, that uh, Adit did in his community also, and about forty five percent people said that they've started making ice cream at home. Uh, Right, and this was a recent poll where fifty-five percent. The rest of the people said they continue to like get it from outside or you know order in, but forty-five percent said they uh, uh, make it at home. Um, and 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 the other sort of so that's one trend there, right? Like, how have you seen the impact? Uh, the other the other interesting thing is this whole health consciousness, right? It's all so immunity is very important, right? having overall healthy foods, which means more awareness around ingredients and, you know, lesser sugar has just, mm. it, it's just become like, you know, people have linked it all together that overall, if I stay healthy, if I stay fit, then that will lead to a higher immunity. Right. Um, so how, how have you seen the impact uh, of, of all of, uh, you know, both of these trends, like making ice cream at home and sort of more healthy, less sugar. Okay. Uh... So yeah, both the questions are interesting. Uh, the first one is a little bit scarier for the category, category we operate or a brand that we run. <laughs> uh, making ice creams at home means shutting down our business, which we do not want. Uh, so definitely uh, uh, during during March to June, when the peak was too high, uh, we, we suffered a lot because those are the four months where ice cream sells the most. It's summertime. And that was the exact time when markets were shut, dealers were shut, we couldn't we couldn't perform anything. Uh, factories were also almost shut. The production was down to 5%. The trend that we saw is, while you, while, while you saw, well, the thing that you said is absolutely correct. People tried making ice creams, right? People looking for recipes online. However, the challenge of making ice creams in home versus the ice creams manufactured in a factory are completely different. Uh, while you can make most of your loved foods or loved recipes at home. It's very difficult to replicate a cheese making process, a ice cream making process at home. Okay, uh, so the paneer that you get, probably you, we, we, we make paneer at home, but the paneer that you get from Amul, the, the soft paneer, it, it's completely a different feel that you have. So yes, uh, we, we saw that trend. Uh, however, the trend has changed and for the good, uh, we, have, we have come back to normalcy, at least in terms of uh, dining out, as as you mentioned, uh, the 45% levels in all the metro cities where we used to sell online through food aggregators or through our own platforms, we've reached that mark again. So so one thing is that the people have started coming back to ice creams as a category, uh, which was a little bit that difficult to make at replicated at home. Uh, second, uh, not just replicating it, but also preserving it for a longer period of time. That's another challenge when it comes to a category like, like ice creams. So the, the texture has to remain. You cannot, there cannot be ice crystals forming in your ice cream. Otherwise you get frozen bites. So these are some critical product features uh, which, which prohibit a person to make uh, the category or the product at home. 
The second thing which you asked is about the immunity. Yes, uh, again, during, during COVID, the first thing that cropped up for everybody was, will eating something cold make me immune or lower my immunity to COVID? That was the question on everybody's mind. Uh, so the ice cream, ICMA or, or the ice cream group, they also came out with a release or with, with a press release that eating ice creams doesn't uh, lower your immunity or doesn't make you uh, susceptible to coronavirus. So that was clear evidence. However, we saw brands. We saw brands coming out with haldi ice cream, honey ice cream. Okay, now we as a brand, have more as a brand, we always believe that ice creams, for example, the way you said you made an ice cream out of, for the joy for your son. Okay, that is what ice creams bring to our life. It doesn't bring immunity, it doesn't bring health. If you want health, there, is a, there are healthy foods. If you want immunity, there are medicines. But ice cream is something different. We do not want to tamper with that feeling of an ice cream. And we stayed, consciously we stayed away from that immunity ice cream bread. Because it, it's, it's just there for a few days or for a few months. It's not going to last. The only immunity, yes, uh, people find ice creams very sweet. So probably sugar-free a low calorie could be the next gen ice cream that people will be waiting for. And yes, there are some inroads happening. There are, there are many private brands, private labels who are into the low calorie ice creams. So yes, that, that, that could be a way for low calorie or sugar-free ice creams going forward. But immunity boosters probably are not, at least not have more. I think that's a very sensible, you're right, right? Like, uh, I don't know if I would buy a healthy ice cream. Maybe we can do a poll to find but, out. Tam Tamana, if I may add. So yeah. we were one of those who did launch healthy ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and we have we have a haldi ice cream which is doing extremely well so the first reaction was haldi and ice cream will the two meet because like uh, our friend said ice cream <laughs> is about taste and indulgence right it's about the joy of eating but the first scoop the first spoonful that people take from a haldi ice cream and say wow haldi ice cream with immunity and can it taste so good so that's what we aim to do you know build an immunity into a product that people already like and then make it so i'm so the taste so awesome that they love the taste and come back for the taste of it and immunity comes as an arrow and benefit so ice cream is not the only one in which we did the immunity range we did a lot of milk beverages so we got tulsi dood ginger dood ashwagandha dood and so many things we did entire range of milk beverages which were immunity you know based on the immunity platform a lot of our campaigns were on immunity we position, in fact, milk itself, the basic, the most basic product that we market, that mm -hmm. itself is something which enhances human immunity. And we had a big campaign during this COVID times, repositioning milk as an immunity booster, immunity enhancer for the human body. So yes, uh, immunity is something that we worked on uh, and in terms of product innovation, in terms of putting in new products in the market, a lot and lot of immunity products that we came out with. If you check our Facebook page right now, we are having a big Facebook campaign on one of our latest immunity introductions, innovations, and in ice cream again, we call it immunity chakra. And it's got three immunity ingredients in it. So it's something that uh, I'm sure if you, I mean, people will, people have taken to it and immunity to, in our mind, really works in food products and people are looking out for immunity boosters, especially the ones that also taste good. <laughs> yeah, so I think, I mean, you know, yeah, both points of view are right. Ice cream is like, I would, I would love to have chocolate ice cream because I always love chocolate ice cream. But yeah, given a choice, you know, maybe someone would say, let me try that haldi ice cream. Now, whether haldi in that form leads to immunity, of course, the ingredients benefits are proven. But in that cold form, does haldi lead to immunity? Uh, is, is something that, you know, it's, I mean, it's not tangible, right? It is debatable, and, uh, but, but, but I, I understand. And it's, it's truly completely sort of affected our, our choices. I, I actually, since you mentioned this, I have, I have one question, uh, you know, before uh, Adit, I come to you that, uh, uh, you know, for these new products, I did see that, you know, Amul has launched a whole range of new products, right? Um, uh, given that uh, this was pretty much, post sort of lockdown, right? Given that there was no consumer research happening in person, clearly people are not going out. 
uh, were there any efforts done in terms of understanding uh, you know insights or sort of looking at conversations because every single brand right so the last webinar we did was on personal hygiene and there's 300 new brands come up with uh, you know sanitizers and believe it or not like some of the market leaders right their share has gone the share of voice has reduced because because of non availability people you know just started buying lot of new brands so uh, every brand pretty much has launched some form of a immunity product uh, you know even in the food space uh, but what to launch and you know how to even create so again out of 100 haldi products which ones do i choose that are most effective right so educating consumers but also first finding out that what because we you know clearly like there was a spike in like the kada the concoctions uh, you know doing those things at home but just wanted to understand so where are you tapping into insights and where are you educating so recipes is of course a great way of education but uh, for these new products how is that education happening so is the question on uh, how do we conceptualize and generate ideas for new products and bring it into you know bring them to the market or is it about post launch and then educating the consumers about them but let me answer let, let me answer the spirit of spirit of what you uh, what you wanted to ask yes in terms of innovation and how we do it and how we did it even during the covid times believe me new product innovation is into our in, is in our dna is deeply ingrained in the dna of amul so even prior to covid we were doing at an average we have something called a new product introduction index we call it npi index and our npi index was more than two new products every month so in 48 months we had done an average of more than two new product introductions every month from amul that's the kind of new product introduction rate we have so we obviously have a well structured system that scans the environment that continuously interacts with end users generates ideas from different sources evaluates those ideas you know Uh, test out the viability of those ideas in the field in the market and through a process of iterative con- you know product evaluation and uh, f- a series of gates and filters we are able to zero down on those products that we that will actually work uh, amul works on the concept of what we call umbrella branding so you got one brand and a host of products under that brand we are very careful when we evaluate a product in terms of its viability and in terms of consumer response that it is likely to elicit so when we bring something to the market it goes through very rigorous field test consumer evaluation test and we are very confident only when we are very confident it becomes an amul product right so those systems helped us even during the covid times and uh, well we had different ways since obviously field researches etc were limited in the initial uh, the days of the lockdown especially in the first 3 months we had our own ways of testing out products we also use common sense a lot so well if there is you know there's a desire for immunity based food products obviously haldi do the something that has been in india for generations it does not really require a you know a great stretch of imagination to know that haldi dood could be launched or for that matter tulsi dood or ginger dood because those are something which are intuitively things that indians understand as immunity boosters we just had to make sure that the products when they come to the market taste good and in food product when the, the moment you take the first step or the first bite it has to you know have you hooked so that is that is what we aim to do right very interesting the npi index i'm learning a lot of new things today <laughs> uh so adit uh, Mm, adit just uh, you know i've i've known adit since a few months now uh, you know we we i met him the first time when we did a user interview with him because he had installed conversite was using it for his uh, facebook group and it was very inspiring to listen to his journey uh, because he's now full time community leader and runs uh, uh, one of the most popular food communities in delhi uh, adit help us understand um, Uh, you know one is your journey of course uh, you know it's very inspirational but who are these people who are a part of the community and uh, there's so many channels online right where we can get they can go and get information on food on recipes there's 
there's brands, there's celebrities, right, who are posting uh, online. Why, why would, why would they come to a Facebook group uh, and and talk? Like, who and who are these people? Are they primarily chefs? Are they individuals? Sure. So, thanks for your kind words, firstly, Tamanna. So, I'm I'm glad you found my journey inspirational, and um, really pleased to hear that. And hello to everybody. So. Uh, when I started this Facebook community, this was way back in 2015. And at that time, I felt there's a vacuum and there's a need of having a close-knit community of food lovers. And anybody who is associated with food in any manner can happily come and engage. And I'm pleased to see over the years, that's exactly what's happened. So to answer your question, all kinds of um, people who are in some way associated to food, be it they're a passionate food lover, or their business revolves around food, or they're food professionals, or they are um, top bloggers of food. Anybody who is associated with food is welcome to be a part of Delhi Foodies and is having a great time. So those are the kind of people who are there in my community, Delhi Foodies. And to answer the second part of your question, uh, uh, brands would have a great time because I was listening to some of the insights shared by both these team panelists here. Um, See, when I come to ice creams, um, um, I'll say I'm more of a purist. So uh, when you when something like uh, well, haldi ice cream is mentioned, my eyes go up, and it's uh, so. So I think the brands need to come into the communities and listen to what the actual pulse of the nation is saying. So we we would gladly. Do. I may be wrong. I'm saying I, I speak for myself here. The community could prove me wrong because it's an open democratic community. But I feel. You know, um, as a person, as a foodie, uh, I do give in to my indulgences all the time. And uh, so I try to strike a balance, especially uh, during these times where health is the most important thing. So I always uh, try to uh, have a nice diet on the weekdays and on the weekends, I cheat. So ice cream is a part of my cheat. <laughs> so, so, so on my cheat day, I would rather have a pure cassata or a hot chocolate fudge or my favorite flavor is blackcurrant, rather than go for a haldi ice cream. So, so the brands would be more than welcome to, before launching their product, come into some of our communities and check. Like you, I'm sure, do a lot of research, you have a, your own ways of finding out will this product actually work. So have a sample and maybe come on board. And so this is what communities offer. This is what we offer. Brands can come on board. Uh, maybe a restaurant who wants to uh, start a new innovative fusion cuisine because a lot of time, you know, we keep hearing tandoori momos doing really well now, but a lot of purists say we don't like tandoori momos. We love the traditional steamed and fried momos. So before launching it, actually come on board and test, test and get those insights and they will help them. So that's where I think communities offer a lot to brands, uh, restaurants, um, uh, recipe creators, all of them, anybody who's associated with food, because this is where foodies are. So Adit, uh, tell me a little bit more, like when I was, uh, you know, chatting with you yesterday and asking you about post-COVID, uh, right, what all happened. And there's a few themes that you spoke about, which were very interesting that, uh, especially the semi-cooked and DIY, right? Like how from the initial knee jerk to just cooking at home to now being fatigued, from cooking yeah. at home and this trend of, so tell us a little bit more that what happened post COVID uh, just in terms of conversations, where did they shift immediately and where are they now? So Tamana, you know, as I mentioned yesterday, I'll mention it again today for everybody to hear, you know, COVID has been around for a long time now. It's not something new now, but if we go back when it came back earlier, so people were really shocked and people were scared so the behavior and the conversations in the community revolved around uh, what they were feeling. They were scared. Eating out, dining out was not an option at that time. Lockdown was imposed. People are locked up inside. They wanted to use food to boost up their immunity, be at the peak of their game, peak of their health. That's what they wanted to do initially. And they couldn't uh, just go to a, a Swiggy or a Zomato and order in. Maybe a lot of people um, choose healthy eating out options also, but they, that was not an option. So dining out became dining in. Focus was more on people cooking in the initial days. And everybody wanted those, as you mentioned, immunity boosting, kadas, 
a lot of people started coming up with immunity boosting laddus and those posts went viral on our communities that started happening so later on what happened was and i for one um uh, uh, i am a passionate cooking and i also find uh, cooking therapeutic but i don't do it regularly i also started doing it more often i we with my wife's help we made an excellent butter chicken which was one of the best tasting butter chickens we had so we did that initially we all were excited later on when the unlocked down started um, uh, happening dining out and ordering out more precisely became an option again and as you said fatigue started setting in we got tired of our new found energy we had coffee cooking over lot of cooking has happened so uh, again dining out became an option people started venturing out and at that same time uh, some of them who were not very adventurous they didn't want to go out but they wanted to order in with the new found research which is coming in like uh, eating out and uh, ordering from outside is um, fairly safe if a number of protocols are met and brands also began to assure the end consumers like um, all the um, uh, hygiene uh, practices all the safety protocols are being met so go ahead and order from us so people started doing it and during this time brands and uh, restaurants also added a new product to their inventory which is do it yourself meal kits which is uh, i'll take an example of uh, um, in my diet days also uh, i have a lot of proteins so i have to uh, cook my proteins on my own so they uh, came up with marinated chicken marinated uh, paneer pre marinated which is semi cooked they do everything but in the end the end finishing i do it in my oven or my fryer so it's done in in my own in front of my own eyes so um, and i really liked it and now that a lot of options are still available i still find i am still buying those do it yourself um, the products and i'm using them so things are changing as with covid people earlier were scared and um, the the conversations were reflecting on that later on people are now learning to live with covid and that same change is being reflected in the conversations also earlier there was a plethora everybody wanted to say in the post um, um, we have all kinds of posts on our community so people used to share their breakfast posts and you uh, used to mention in the initial days of covid oh i start my day now with tulsi drops so that those conversations were really peaking people wanted to say that look we are doing a lot of healthy stuff in our diet now and now later on you see a lot of um, normalcy return a lot of uh, people are in fact uh, sharing uh, giving into those cravings sharing having street food making street food at home ordering street food has started and people are doing it so the conversations are changing people are learning to as the lockdown is happening as with the outside society something similar is happening uh, inside the community also and adit how does uh, how do the members uh, react when a brand uh, so i believe you've you've been doing brand campaigns right even even from before but how do the members react uh, you know when brands come and want to talk to them or uh, any insights can you take some examples sure so you know i've uh, always advocated this to the brands also because um, uh, being a community entrepreneur myself and i'm an ex uh, media sales guy myself so i've been on both sides so so what i advocate to the brands is the messaging or the conversations when you engage with the community members should be subtle and indirect and not more in in your face you can't just have a no, like what you do on say a newspaper you can't have that same creative in a community you need to have the conversations tweak in a way that the members feel the brand is offering something valuable to them be it a contest be it a nice giveaway be it some uh, insights about why consumers should choose their brand i'll take an example of a um, uh, fairly new brand uh, which is a um, uh, food delivery um, uh, guy uh, primarily focusing on non veg products good to go so during covid uh, a lot of people started stop ordering non veg foods because there was a lot of gray area about is non veg safe to order from outside or not so their sales suffered and at that time they seeked our help the uh, the founder of that uh, company called me up and they said let me educate uh, the members about the safety precautions we are doing so in that creative they showed the rider fully masked 
and um, they showed that they are also taking care of all the safety precautions and the, the product which we are delivering to you is absolutely safe to consume and that worked that worked a lot of people said yes we did order after seeing this uh, creative and we really love the quality of stuff which this guy is giving so this is where communities can really help brands and brands can also tweak their messaging like right now in diwali um, you can have a diwali specific messaging from the brand you can simply wish um, um, diwali to the members and have a diwali centric recipe contest we've got two of those going on live right now as we talk so a lot of is can be done a lot of is being uh, done so there's a lot to offer or so a lot of recipe contests yeah, yeah. adit's community has a lot of recipe contests there's i think one going on with ashirwad atta one going on with uh some uh, idayam yeah 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 idayam okay that's i i i wanted to come back um to pavan and uh, vincent and ask about this whole uh, semi cooked uh, or the diy um it's uh, i think what what it's doing is and what we're seeing in conversation it kind of brings together this feeling of doing it yourself so it's still that satisfaction while uh you know reducing the time right and uh, so so are are there any innovations and i know it's you know very difficult for ice cream or maybe it is not maybe we just need to think a little bit more uh but uh, uh what's the thought there like is that a trend that you know and especially like sort of the newer generation uh, is that something they'll adopt because it's a habit that's also become right not that i'll go and make ice cream every single time but you know this certain things have become a part of the habit so what what is the thought around that um, any kind of research there uh, or newer products okay you should i go first on this or vincent you want to take this no you can pavan you can go okay all right uh, so what you know our core competence is food products and specifically milk and dairy products and a lot of these products go into the kitchen as ingredients in food preparation right and then we have a lot of ready to eat products as well which say beverages chocolates and mithai and so on so what we have been doing over the, in recent years is moving up the value chain moving up the value ladder and uh, converting our ingredient products into ready to cook or ready to eat products so for example uh, we have cheese amul cheese so out of that we make amul cheese popcorns so amul cheese parathas or amul cheese onion parathas we more precise and then these come in frozen forms and consumers simply have to take them home if they want they can just uh, just heat them up and cook them on a tawa so it's ready to cook basically or they can do a lot of their own creativity to it so you can do garnishing you can add some more of your own ideas to it and make it even bigger and better for example we've had uh, a product called frozen pizzas for years so frozen pizzas again we sell pizza cheese the mozzarella cheese and then we came out with a frozen pizzas so these frozen pizzas people buy them and they then they do their own garnishing they do their own toppings of course pizza is all about toppings and crust right so once they have a frozen pizza which already is you know a pre garnish but they can do a lot of creativity on it and do the pizzas as per their own customize it as per their own taste and just to delight their own families and kids so we do that moving up the value ladder is a conscious uh, step that we've taken we have dahi so we what we do is make dahi tikkis and these are again a range of frozen dahi tikkis that we market and people take them home now of course you can have dahi tikkis as it is just put them in your you know you just cook them and they're ready to eat or you can then use your creative creativity and do a lot of garnishing you can do some value add to it you can add your own creative inputs and uh, you know delight your families so a lot of things like these we are doing paneer so we make paneer nuggets so again cheese we got cheese popcorns and cheese you know so a whole range of value add products which are now either ready to cook or products which can be you know taken home and well users can do their own creative inputs on it and do their own value add and serve it to the families or just have it at home and enjoy that's what we do it's very interesting so mostly frozen foods which we can bring home yes. and yes. try and yes. you know i'm sure in like next month out of the two new products one might be like <laughs> do it yourself 
like even non frozen right there can be innovation there where uh, yeah absolutely absolutely so uh, that can also be done so you can have a whole kit of things and then but of course we do those combos so example uh, on many of these e-commerce sites we there are combos which happen so a condensed milk which goes by the brand amul mithai mate which is you know a condensed sweet and condensed milk so that and a, in the carrot season so there's a combo which happens with carrots and this and then of course we have our own recipe that people can take and make gajar ka halwa at home or for that matter you know paneer and uh, frozen peas so frozen peas and paneer a lot of e-commerce sites they do a lot of bundling and then their recipes were making mutter paneer at home so those kind of things do happen even today very interesting right um i would press oh anna do you have any other questions otherwise we have some questions for uh, vincent to uh, i think he was going to answer i'll be, I'll be sure, very please, uh, yeah, please I'll be very quick on this <laughs> yes. uh, so in specific to the with specific specifics to the ice cream category okay the challenge with diy is the last mile connectivity okay uh, you you need ice creams to be in their form by the time it reaches home you either pick them up from a modern store or you 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 order them online by the time it reaches home it's almost ready to eat okay you can't store it again and you can't make a recipe out of it so th- that's one challenge uh, is the infrastructure for a frozen product which has to be frozen in nature during consumption that's a big challenge for us uh so as a brand yes we have taken some learnings during the covid times and we've come up with certain packaging again the packaging is not very environment friendly it is still in thermocol boxes but it gives longevity to the product it it improves the shelf life for a product for a consumer to have an ice cream and do it by themselves if they want to convert an ice cream into a sundae into a cassata or into some other form which they want at home so this is something that we've innovated recently just with packaging and not with the product per se so uh, so that is how we are helping people or helping our consumers to get their diy kit at home right right very interesting <laughs> great so you know a conversation on butter chicken and kasatas can go on forever but uh, since we have a, a timeline to stick to we can always take this conversation offline after the sessions over so thank you so much speakers for this uh, amazing chat that we've had and uh, our presenting partners conversate too i just have some quick questions from the audiences uh, to each of our speakers uh, we'll start with you tamanna uh, so a uh, question says that do you think usrs or restaurants should now also have a community budget to understand changes in preferences in consumer behavior as it is imp- uh, it is impossible to speak uh, with the customer inside a restaurant no one is entering and people who are coming want to leave immediately yeah your thoughts tamanna yeah so i think uh, again from an insights perspective uh, you know the reason we started doing this uh, you know once we had our own communities we were very fascinated with the depth in conversations right and that's where we we built category specific models to understand i mean end of the day it's what people are talking how do we meaningfully get an insight out of it and take an action so uh, yeah whether it's restaurants or like some of the charts that i you know showed you it's all from conversations it's like people talking if somebody was to do a model of this webinar <laughs> and say that you know these are the top themes so i'm sure what will come out is diy and that's really the power of aggregating millions of conversations and getting to the right insights and there's insights you get on open social media platforms as well because people are commenting on pages and instagram etc but it's still not a two way communication channel a two way communication channel is where people are conversing where it's a trusted forum or a community and facebook groups just because of the scale so just two weeks back facebook groups came up um, there was a global community summit in which uh, you know the number now of people that interact meaningfully in communities just groups every month is 1.8 billion Mm-hmm. so what's contributing to pretty much all the engagement on facebook is groups right it's not a pages and that's because you and i have changed today right we seek authentic conversations and that's where we sort of cater to so yeah i mean you know restaurants and definitely should uh, 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 get insights from conversations absolutely 
Thanks, I actually, Amanda. Sorry, I see a comment here and uh, it says, I really like the cakes that have more has come up with. Vincent, <laughs> that's for you. I just see that comment in the chat with a smiley. So I'm getting yeah, hungrier yeah. now and I have to fast today. So <laughs> I was about to say that. <laughs> yeah, we have lots and lots of questions uh, coming in uh, from the audiences. I would once again want to remind that all these conversations will be live on our uh, our social media handles, you can take it ahead there. So quickly over to you, Pavan. Uh, the question here says that Amul has always understood the pulse of the Indian community via the Amul Girl cartoon and always kind of depicted in its truest sense. How do you get these strong consumer insights from the entire Indian community at large? So of course, uh, that's in our DNA. We have learned to be consumer focused and we keep our finger on the pulse of, you know, the people who matter most, mm -hmm. the end users. So that's, that's what we've always done and we perfected the art over the decades. And that is what Amul is all about. Amul is all about being able to anticipate things which are happening in society even before they happen and uh, be in sync with the times and stay, in fact, try and stay ahead, a couple of steps ahead of the times. So that's what we do. And uh, we keep in sync and we keep in touch with the people who matter most to us, our loyal consumers. Right, right. Thanks so much, Pavan. Um, the next question goes for Vincent. It says, ice cream joints and Metro seem to be famous and almost unbranded companies are becoming the brand in the ice cream industry. Has community marketing played a role in changing this and how has Have More tried to work on the brand? Any example that you'd want to share? Oh, okay. Uh, as a brand, as Have More, uh, we operate into both the categories. One is the retail segment and the other is the ice cream parlors with, to which the question is very specific. Okay, uh, yes, ice creams are or were more regional in nature uh, until infrastructure was built, a cold frozen supply chain was built. And, and, and as a product, it, it's growing because the per capita consumption uh, in India is still 350 ml that's mm -hmm. a per capita consumption. So there is a lo lot of headroom for ice cream as a category to grow. Absolutely. So hence, you and, and, and the mechanics or, or the science behind making an ice cream, there is there's no rocket science. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, you, you can make ice creams uh, in a very small factory. You, all you need is a good deep freezer to connect it at a retail store and sell it from there. The real challenge lies in the distribution part. Mm -hmm. And that is why you see small, small, small outlets or independent outlets in different parts of the cities coming up, cropping up and establishing themselves. Absolutely. In terms of community uh, messaging, has that worked? Uh, yes, online uh, food or online aggregators, peer advocacy or network advocacy has, has helped develop this entire online gaming or, or this online food uh, business, I would say. And, and that is where these smaller brands or these independent individual private labels are making a lot of money from. Mm -hmm. Vincent, uh, talking of, you know, communication and messaging, there's a small addition to your question that says that, how is Have More using digital to persuade more people to have more ice cream? Not that it requires <laughs> a lot of persuasion, but still. Okay, so, so there, are, there are two hidden questions in here. One right. is uh, communicating ice creams outside of summer okay where yes. where the need is for a consumer is not very evident but for us as a brand it's very evident we have to make sales we have to grow so how do we communicate to them that's one point and the second is how do we reach to them uh, through the online platform and through the offline platform right. so the way we have we've targeted uh, this communication is we've picked up geographies for example the the moment we came out of covid it was monsoons and then we entered into the beginning of winter, okay, which is again a lean period for ice creams. But we picked up geographies like Gujarat, Rajasthan, where neither monsoons are strong and also winter arrives somewhere in December, January. So mm -hmm. we upped our marketing spends in these geographies and we went online. So right now, for example, we have a series called Have More Passport with a local celeb in Gujarat, uh, Malar Thakkar. And we are, we are taking regional marketing as the route to go out and meet to consumers, talk to them about our product, the different kind of range that we have. That's one, how we communicate. And on the second line of how we ensure our products go there to the consumer online, we've launched a, 
a new range of ice creams called hash motogo okay now uh, by by the name itself it's hash it means it's online motogo it's on the go for you it's it's an exclusive range of ice creams only meant to be sold online so again we are catering to the consumer getting them connected hooked onto online and we've made a product available online to these consumers so we are piloting this in ahmedabad right now where our ho is and then we plan to take it to the rest of india awesome uh i'll get to the next question is to you uh, the question goes like have you done campaigns in your community with only large food brands or restaurants are also interested to actively participate in your community so uh, to be honest uh, restaurants are actively doing a lot of uh, stuff in some of the other communities and i'll be honest to say that i have not been um, very actively uh, in um, in touch with the restaurant owners but it's starting to happen now more so in covid they do um, there's a lot of uh, room for restaurant owners to come and um, uh, get gain valuable insights for them but uh, being an ex um, uh, media guy myself my initial uh, uh, conversations happened with top, with brands bigger and smaller so i have been uh, you are guilty of not reaching out to restaurants to strike conversations earlier but yes a lot of indirect um, uh, conversations around restaurants automatically are happening in communities because pre covid a lot of people um, um, were dining out and they used to have organic reviews of those places so those conversations were happening but yes there is a lot of scope now with the hospitality industry really hit um and uh, communities can really offer a lot by uh, reaching out to the audience and tell them like look at the best practices which the restaurants are now offering so there are lots of scope which can be done a lot of communities are doing it we are um, uh, not very active in it were not very active in it but it can be done right great uh, we have uh, some more questions live from the audience uh, somebody called sneha kulkarni is asking what's the link on fb sneha you can log into any of our social handles and you'll find all our speakers there you'll find the uh, conversation live there the next I question think, sorry this was for pavan because this question was asked at 5:42 so i think it was when ah. he was talking about the live cooking <laughs> oh okay yeah. okay right. so maybe right. pavan you could uh, uh, i don't know if you sure. have the link we could put it in the chat or just uh, oh yes so i mean just uh, see amul facebook page so it's very easy to find and uh, you can it's already got one uh, i guess 2 million fans right now so i guess if you just like that page you will automatically get the notification whenever that uh, specific uh, recipe show is live and we have uh, as many as seven sessions in a day so it goes live at different times and the last one is at 11 pm in the night so every night and then you will uh, just go ahead and like the amul uh, facebook page and you'll get those notifications every time there's a show which is live right great so we are running short of time so we want to quickly wrap up the session i would once again want to thank all our speakers here of course our, our presenting partner conversite thank you to each one of you for making this conversation interesting and almost delectable uh, you know we can take this conversation offline like i mentioned uh, on our social handles thank you so much for joining us this evening thanks all right thank you thank you so much thank you thanks a lot thank you